As important as the system of government is, it should be abundantly clear to us today that in America, the character of our leaders is more important than the construct of the polity. No system will ensure justice when those are in, who are in government reject God and his truth. To find out more about our Bible reading plan, go to frc.org slash Bible. And by the way, you can join me each morning, Monday through Friday at 844 a.m. That's 844 a.m. Eastern time for a daily devotional based upon the two-year Bible reading plan, or you can find it at TonyPerkins.com as well. All right, according to the latest Labor Department report released late last week, the Consumer Price Index rose 7.5% in January from a year ago, making the fastest increase in inflation since February of 1982, when inflation hit 7.6%. And we've seen the effects at the store, the gas pump, and in every facet of our lives. In certain cities, rent is up 30% or more from a year ago. Prices for used cars are up 40% year to year. And American families, the grocery bills, well, they've increased by $856 year to year. As inflation continues to defy expectations, radical Democrats maintain the solution is more spending in the form of President Joe Biden's Build Back Better plan. And while some, like Senator Joe Manchin, recognize that trillions in spending will only add fuel to the fire, there are those, like Nancy Pelosi that we mentioned earlier, who maintains otherwise. So, which is it? Well, with us now to talk about this is Dr. Dave Bratt, Dean at Liberty University School of Business and a former member of Congress. Dr. Bratt, welcome back to the program. Hey, Tony, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Okay, so let me ask you a question. Who's right? Nancy yeah. Pelosi saying we need more spending to address the inflation, or Joe Manchin, who's saying more spending from the government will only fuel inflation? Well, uh, I'm a, uh, Tony Perkins is right. <clears throat> they both made little technical errors. You said, uh, and worded it properly, is spending related to inflation, and it is. And I will solve the entire mystery of inflation for you here in five seconds. So all the uh, Christians out there, get out your pencils. Here is your answer, right? Write that down. MV equals PQ. This is roughly speaking uh, macroeconomics, Milton Friedman. V is velocity. You can ignore it. Just pretend it's constant. Q is national output, how much stuff you make in a year, how many refrigerators. Let's just assume that's constant. If those are constant, the only two things on that, uh, on that equation are M equals P, basically. So if the amount of money you print goes up, M, P has to go up by exactly the same amount. And so it's money that is always and everywhere the cause of inflation, the amount of money you print. Now, of course, that is highly related to the amount of government spending the Democrats want to do. So that's why everybody conflates that in their head. But inflation is not the result of supply chain problems. It's not the fault of the uh, minimum wage. Uh, both both sides got to tell the truth on this thing. Those things are, go along with it, but it's like a balloon, right? If you don't print more money, you can raise the prices over here, uh, but that this formula, P, uh, has to stay constant, right? You didn't print any more money. So if you raise prices over here, some other prices have to go down over there. And that's just the way it works. It's an identity in mathematics. It's, it, it, there's no uncertainty around it. Money causes inflation. And so... Uh, a lot of people are tempted to make up stories that are related to it. Like you said, is it is spending related? Of course, because we just why did we print all that money uh, so the Democrats can go on a spending spree? So that's usually the case, uh, but it's the amount of money that causes the inflation. Democrats are very concerned about uh, this inflation and the cost of living for voters all across America. In fact, uh, Joe Biden earlier, uh, about a few months ago, said this was transitory. This was just passing. It was not going yeah. to be here very long. Yeah. Last week, he was asked about that. Lester Holt uh, from NBC Nightly News asked him that question. Uh, play clip number one, please. I think it was back in July you said inflation was going to be temporary. I think a lot of Americans are wondering what your definition of temporary is. Well, you're being a wise guy with me a little bit. Uh, I understand that's your job. So to ask about the president's statement that this was transitory as being a wise guy? Yeah. No, no, that, that, that's right. And so we printed, I don't know what, I think 30% more money. So you're going to have inflation. 
And it, just to make it clear to everybody too, you know, prices matter in a free market system. Prices are the ultimate signal. It's the only signal. How does everything get on the shelf in Walmart? Uh, prices send those signal. Once you scan it at Walmart, uh, the inventory system scans the price and says, uh, somebody just purchased things, buy more. So every single little price carries a lot more information than you think. Now aggregate that up to every single price in the economy, big P. That's the inflation rate. So now I tell you, hey, we're just going to jack the price, every single price in the economy up by 7% on average, right? Some are more and some are less. Uh, can you imagine you don't have a supercomputer big enough to handle that calculation and the complexity of what just went wrong? So the entire price level for the macro economy is changing by 7%. Some of it's up over here. So businesses don't know what to do. Now it just went up to 7.5%. So not only is it not transitory, it's 7%, which is a 40-year high, and it's going up. And so you don't know. If you just print, printed 40% more money, how much more is it going to go up? You don't know. So imagine what that does to business decision-making going out a few quarters or a few years. Are you going to plow a ton of new capital investment in your plant or into uh, real estate, et cetera, uh, when you have that big of an unknown uh, going out in front of you? And then, because we've already destroyed the free market system so much, we just have anomalies on our hand. How in the world can you have 7% inflation rate and a 2% uh, treasury bond, 10 year treasury bond? It's never happened before, right? And the only reason is people might be buying bonds right now is a risk hedge, right? Because they see, hey, we're in trouble. And so if you buy bonds, you know, the price of bonds goes up and yield goes down. And so the interest rate stays down. But this, this has never happened. We're abandoning the free market price system, which has served us so well. And you don't hear anybody talking about that. That's the big deal that matters. We're destroying the infinite complexity and the gift of the invisible hand, which is aligned productivity growth and human welfare, the likes of we, we've never seen on the planet. And we're about so, ready to destroy it. So, Dr. Bratt, what's the way out? I mean, clearly the way out is yeah. not another two trillion dollars in government no. spending. No. Uh, which will have to be deficit spending, even even though yeah. they're arguing that this is uh, this the Build Back Better is going to be a deficit reduction. Um, I've never seen that. Uh, but what's the way out? Yeah. Well, the way out, uh, you know, Ronald Reagan, back when you had, you know, you mentioned the uh, Moses and the counsel of his father and wise men. Uh, not many of them left, unfortunately. Right. Uh, one of the few strong men that was just uh, a leader was Ronald Reagan, and he had Paul Volcker, and they had 17% uh, inflation and huge interest rates. And they, the way you fix it is you slam, you slam your brake on. You, you quit printing money. In, in the face of everything I just told you, the Fed hasn't raised rates at all yet, and they're still doing a little bit of monetary easing. They're still creating minimal inflation. They're adding to uh, the fuel on the fire instead of putting their foot on the brake, because if you put your foot on the brake, they know they may get a recession. There will be a recession, right? If you do the seven uh, quarter point hikes that they're talking about, that will push us most likely into recession. No one wants that, uh, but if you don't cure inflation, right? You see what it's doing to middle-class wages, right? You just, you just right. made your wage rate, you made a hundred bucks uh, this month. Well, sorry, you only made 93, right? And that's, it, it, the inflation rate's going up. So you but can expect more of that uh, in the months to follow. We're, we're, we're up against a break, Dr. Brad, but clearly this is the result of policy that yeah, has sure. driven a lot of this. And yeah. this is, you know, elections have consequences. And yeah. I think American voters have an opportunity to see it on full display with what we're experiencing yeah. right now. Uh, Dave Brad, always great to talk with you. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today. Thanks, Tony. God bless. Thank you.